Hi, it's me. Did you like these new features? Well, of course you did. Anyway, this is my new update video number four. You see, I wanted to improve on the current optical system on the Octa 35 Mark II camera. It's kind of bad. You'll soon see why. Let's examine this one first and then we'll go to the new Mark III optical system. This is the part we're looking at. At the front of the camera we have a C-mount for various size lenses. This whole part moves via internal linear stepper motor from one film track to another. Shooting starts at track number 1, then goes to 2, 3 and ends at track number 4. The film gate is at a fixed size at 6 by 4.5 mm with an aspect ratio at 4 by 3 or 1.33 to 1. It's a little bigger than Super 8 format at 5.8 by 4 mm. A very crude TTL or through the lens viewfinder is achieved using the film itself as a focusing plane and attached lens for magnification. The resulting image is of course very dark and difficult to frame and focus. And yes, the iris is fully opened. This of course overexposes and ruins a portion of film each time we do a focus check or use the through the lens viewfinder. And that's about it for the Mark II optical system. The new Mark III, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's a lot better. Starting with the front, it contains the same C mount, but it's now able to hold and move much bigger lenses due to the expanded ring distance and the bigger and more powerful built in stepper motor. It's capable of very precise movements, critical for changing from one film track to another without any misalignment. What's this? Why, it is a TTL window. More on this later. The built-in stepper motor is able to lift and hold a full 330 ml bottle with no problems. Some of you may have noticed, and yes, it does look like an on-off switch that you can find on smartphones and apps and whatnot. And then I mentioned, it looks way nicer compared to Mark II design. The camera shutter has also been improved. It now uses a rotary solenoid with a simple leaf shutter with only one moving part. Now, what's the shutter speed like? Well, it's quite fast. By using the late... By using the late... Technology! By using the latest technology... The shutter ranges from bulb mode up to 1 over 125 of a second. This may not sound much, but hey, this is a motion picture camera we're talking about. The shutter will be able to run from 1 up to 25 frames per second, all in crystal sync speed with electronically variable shutter degree. Due to this opening and closing method, there may be some uneven exposure at higher speeds, but in Mark II we are using the same shutter method and all the shot footage that was scanned was evenly exposed. Did not notice any uneven exposure, so there's that. And yes, I also tried experimenting with other shutter designs, such as using a very small and thin pancake stepper motor as a shutter. But here I have found that it's simply too big to fit in. My custom design with a simple rotary solenoid shutter with one moving part will have to do. With replaceable shutter housing, I have now the luxury of having multiple film gate sizes. I have come up with two options. Option 1 with an aspect ratio of 4x3 or 1.33 to 1 and option 2 with a more cinematic ratio of 16x9 or 1.78 to 1. Dimensions the 4x3 ratio at 6.3 x 4.75 mm and the 16x9 at 8.4 x 4.75 mm. And how do these sizes stack to other film formats? A 
8mm format being the smallest at 4.8 by 3.5mm, then Super 8, Octo 35 4x3, 16x9 and 16mm format at 10.2 by 7.5mm. One could say that 16x9 gate size lays somewhere between 8 and 16mm formats. Nice! But hey, there's a catch! Note that the 4x3 gate size uses four long exposure tracks from edge to edge and the 16x9 uses only three long tracks. Meaning when shooting with 16x9 gate size we lose one quarter of shooting time. But in return we get a wider format with increased resolution and smaller grain size. So the 4x3 is used for longer shots and 16x9 for shorter but wider shots. I know that longer shooting capabilities are as equally important, so yes, I'll also be designing an external film magazine in order to increase the shooting time. Let me know which gate size would you use. As we all know, during the exposure, the film must be as still as possible. In order to minimize gate view effect or image shakiness in horizontal direction, I have narrowed the film transport table width to just shy over 35mm, so there is just enough space to pass a 35mm film through. For vertical stabilization, I have improved sprocket teeth shape. The Mark III will support KS and BH film perforation standards, which should cover all 35mm film. For the film pressure plate, I have experimented with different designs and materials, ranging from smooth plastic covers to simple rails. At the end, I have decided to go with a simple velcro loop padding. Simple, robust and offers just the right amount of springiness and tension. It is very important for the user to be able to see through the lens to perform correct framing, zoom and critical focus check. Some lenses don't have a focus ring with markings so a through the lens viewfinder is that much more important to have. While the Mark II is using film itself as a focusing plane, the Mark III uses a separate ground glass located right here next to the film. This ground glass has the same flange distance as the film plane itself. Essentially what you see is what you would get shooting on the film. The through the lens magnification is achieved using a cheap 25mm lens that also serves as a film scanning lens. And adding a simple image flip adapter in order to flip the image upside down. You may have already guessed it, the through the lens viewfinder cannot be used during the actual shooting due to shifting lens and multi-track physical limitations. So how does one use it? The user switches between optical viewfinder and OLED viewfinder. There will be a button on the camera body that switches between these two states for easy operation. Quite a lot of time has passed since my last update. It's been 84 years. My apologies that you have to wait so long for this update. I had to take some time off the project in order to do some other things. Also, the development of this optical system took me way, 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 way too long to be finished. Dealing with any optical system, a high precision approach is a must in order to achieve a good image quality. It was quite an engineering challenge to pull off. With the film advanced stepper, PCB board, OLED viewfinder, and now this optical system adding into collection, the camera is starting to take some shape. My next update can also take me a long time, so be prepared. Only this time with update number 5, I'll be presenting complete and finished Octo 35 Mark III camera. Well, at least that's the plan. A big thanks to Daya Dots and Ryan James Hibbert. Both have supported the project development with film donations. Thank you. 
projects like this require a lot of resources and time, so if you would like to help me, please consider donating through PayPal or via film donations. Every bit helps and I'll be happy to accept it. Thank you. If you haven't already, I encourage you to visit my website, here you'll find more in-depth information on Mark II and upcoming Mark III camera. Questions, suggestions, ideas? Let me know! Well, that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching and see you in my next update. Bye!